Well, g'day, Curd Nerds, and today we're making Castle Blue. So Castle Blue looks like it's an original recipe from uh, the 200 Easy Cheese Making Recipes by Deborah Amron's Boys. Uh, and it's actually from their farm. They actually invented the recipe. Uh, and they have a company called the Farmhouse Natural Cheeses. So this cheese is described as being a blue cheese that is soft until it's oozy and creamy. Uh, it has natural rinds that vary intensity from blue to grey and inside the paste is scattered with blue veins. We'll see how that goes, of course. My version is similar. Um, I don't think I've changed very much at all from the original recipe. So hopefully I've stayed true to type. And uh, yeah, and hopefully uh, Deborah will be pleased with what I've concocted out of her recipe. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's get on and see how I made the cheese. So first of all, you'll have to sanitise your equipment. I've got all of my stainless steel equipment there and uh, that was boiled for about 15 minutes. Now I've set up my work area. I've got a sous vide there keeping the water temperature in the bath at 32 degrees Celsius. Now the ingredients for this cheese are 6.5 litres or 6.8 quarts of cow's milk, whole cow's milk, 500 mils or two cups of whipping cream, eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture, an eighth of a teaspoon of penicillium roque 40 mould powder, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. A quarter of a teaspoon, 1.25 millilitres of single strength rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You're also going to need some non-iodized cheese salt for salting the cheese later on. So pour your milk into the pot and clip your thermometer on and if you're using unhomogenized milk and there's some cream floating on the top give that a little bit of a whisk just to incorporate that back into the milk. Now the initial temperature there it took me a while to heat this up because this is the first time I ever used a sous vide and you would have seen a previous video on it here. Now heat your milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's fairly close, within 0.3 of a degree, so that's okay. So we're going to add the starter culture now. Just sprinkle that over the top. And just a tad more because it wasn't a level teaspoon. And we're going to add the Penicillium Rogue 40 powder, the blue mould powder. Just sprinkle that over the top. So cover that up and then we're going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're going to stir that into the milk now. Now you may have trouble incorporating the penicillium rope 40 powder. It does tend to float on the top uh, at this early stage of the cheese making process, but give it a good stir and that'll incorporate it all the way through the milk as it rehydrates. It takes a little bit longer than the normal starter culture. Uh, it will incorporate. Now allow the milk to ripen for 90 minutes. So 90 minutes later, it should be at the right acidity level. Give that a quick stir because the cream would have floated to the top. Just check the temperature and it's fairly spot on. Uh, notice I've got the sous vide set 
half a degree Celsius above the temperature I want, but that's okay. Now we're going to add in the calcium chloride, just to add some soluble calcium back to the milk after it's been pasteurized. And then we're going to add the rennet. And the rennet is the substance or the enzyme that coagulates the milk and turns it into curds and whey. So stir that for no more than one minute. There we go. Now I'm using the flocculation method. So we start a stopwatch after we've added the rennet. See how long it takes to flocculate. We're going to, uh, we're going to float a small plastic lid just on top. Just trying to get the there's some fat globules on top. And it should freely spin. Now spin it at about the eight minute mark and then every 30 seconds to test for when it stops spinning. Now when it stops spinning is called the flocculation point. And we'll just check. And yes, it stops spinning there at about the 13 minute mark for me. So I called it at uh, 13 minutes and 19 seconds. So that is when we can safely take off the little lid. We don't need to spin it anymore. So the flocculation multiplier for this one is four. So we're going to multiply 13.3 uh, by four. Gives us 53.2 minutes. So I'm gonna use 53 minutes. So what we now do is take away the 13.3, which was the initial time away from the 53, gives us 39.9. So about 40 minutes is how much is left to set the curds. There we go, and the clock's ticking. So now we check for a clean break, just to make sure that the curd has set as predicted. but it's fairly foolproof when you're using the flocculation method. So we're gonna cut the cubes, the curds into 2.5 centimeter or one inch cubes, rather large. Uh, now I wasn't going to use my, my normal curd harp because that has really small or 1.25 or half the size of what they should be. So I just cut diagonally to get larger cube sizes and then just used my skimmer to just cut uh, horizontally so we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes so they don't fracture when you start stirring them and there they are fairly chunky that's kind of what we want i'm going to stir the curds gently now at the target temperature for 30 minutes now i'm only cutting the odd big one i'm not going to cut some of those other ones so start your clock so you know how long to stir for So 30 minutes later, that's about the size of the curd. It's about the size of a Canelli bean, which of those who don't know is a rather large bean. Uh, we're going to allow the curds to settle now to the bottom for five minutes. So I'm stopping the sous vide. I don't need the heat anymore. I'm just going to unplug that, get that out of the way. Drip it dry there a little bit. And pull the plug out. I don't need the water keeping the milk warm anymore because I'm going to put it into its molds. So we're going to dip off the way to the level of the curds now just to make it a little bit easier putting the curds in the basket. Now, because I couldn't uh, stop any of the curds going down the sink, so I decided to start ladling it into the uh, three 10 centimeter or four inch molds. They're camembert molds, traditionally they're called on most cheese making websites. So we fill those up to the tippy top as best we can. Now this will take a little bit of time. It took me about half an hour, I think. Uh, waiting for the curds to settle so I could put some more in there. 
So you just keep refilling them until all the curds have been used. They will shrink under gravity as they drain under their own weight. So just wait about 10 minutes and then uh, as you can see they do shrink down. That's uh, very high speed footage. Like I said it took me about half an hour to fill the baskets uh, using all the curd. This will give us a fairly firm little cheese that will be fairly high in the basket. It won't shrink down to your normal camembert size of cheese. So I'm going to allow those to drain for two hours now that we've totally filled them. And they'll shrink even further. As you can see there, they've shrank about two centimetres from the top of the basket. So just a quick clean up. Now we're going to flip the cheeses over and allow them to drain overnight. Now they were fairly firm at this stage, so I decided to make sure there was a nice clean bottom. I just took them out of the hoops and put the not so smooth side down on the bottom of the basket and uh, that will give me a nice clean surface uh, all over the cheese. So the next day we're going to flip the cheeses again and allow them to drain for two hours. As you can see I've got a nice rind developed on all the cheese there all over. There we go, lovely. Just pop a little umbrella over to keep any beasties off. So two hours later, we're just going to check for firmness. Just get all those mats out of the way, get the uh, maturation box out of the way. Now I could tell they were firm enough, so we're just going to salt the top of each cheese with three quarters of a teaspoon of non-iodized salt. So this is a, tea, a quarter of a teaspoon I'm using there, so I'm using three for each one. Give it a little bit of a rub, get the salt in there, and then flip it over so that the salt side is down. Now the salt side's down, we're going to salt the remaining, the top, with three quarters of a teaspoon of salt on each top and then give that a gentle rub. That'll help the salt absorb into the cheese. Just gentle rub. There we go. So they go into the dishwasher. I'm going to cover those straight away and we're going to ripen those in the cheese fridge at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit at 90% humidity for one week and just pop that into the cheese fridge there. That's how I mature all my cheese. So it's time to pierce the cheese. This is the Castel Blue. Uh, it's been ripening now for uh, a week and a half. So a week and a half, uh, and I'll just pull it out of the box, hopefully not spill anything, and put it down on here. Oh, lovely, look at that. Magnificent, we've got some lovely blue coverage there. Uh, a little bit moist on the bottom, so there's no blue on the bottom, so I'm gonna have to pat those dry. Uh, use some paper towel to do that. Um, so let's do that. Now I've sanitised the, uh, the uh, it's a thermometer that I'm going to pierce the cheese with and that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I've sanitised the board here. So let's just take, let's move that there, put that there, put that there. Let's rip off a bit of my paper towel. My hands are clean. Uh, and make sure, always make sure you've got some clean hands. So I'm just going to flip that over and just pat that dry because it won't grow mould on it if it's that moist. I'm telling you now. But I will pierce from this side, from the, the 
not so moist side. So here we go. So just, I can feel it's really creamy, which is great because I did put a fair bit of cream in this. Just uh, pierce it down. This will allow oxygen into the cheese and for the blue mold to grow because the penicillium broke 40 needs oxygen for it to develop. So only in a few holes, not too many. Uh, we could should get some mold, good mold coverage there. Um, just get rid of that. And I'll do a couple of sideways ones. Just a couple. Maybe one more, one more. There we go. So I haven't gone all the way through. That's just enough to allow the uh, the blue mold in. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, I'll go high speed through the rest. As a, uh, a blue cheese, it tastes quite nice now, I, even though I don't have a little bit of vinegar on my fingers. But yeah, anyway, I'll put them back into the uh, into the ripening box. And yeah, it's got a bit of blue down, so that's all dry now. I've cleaned that all out, as you've seen. Uh, so there's no moisture on the mat or anything like that. But it shouldn't be too wet, uh, because the blue mold just doesn't like to develop and it needs ample oxygen. So you need to make sure that you check at least once a week uh, for the cheese to uh, get enough oxygen um, when you take the lid off and, and let it circulate. Anyway, so that's piercing uh, the cam blues and uh, we'll get back to it when it's time for the taste test. I'm very excited about that. They look lovely so far and taste very nice already. A little bit of a blue hint. But there's no veining and we won't know that until we cut into the cheese. So don't forget to turn your cheese weekly. This will give you an even mould development all over. Here's just an example of one of the turnings that I've done for this cheese. You can see that the mould has developed quite well now all over the cheese. Uh, if I wanted to, I could probably pierce it for a second time. Uh, but I'll see how it goes along, see how the mould's developing. But yeah, nice even mould covering all over the cheese. And make sure you do flip it uh, at least weekly because you'll find that the rind will stick to the mat if you don't and you won't get an even blue covering. So just pop that back into your maturation box again. Make sure they've got a bit of space between them so that the oxygen can get to all surfaces and you won't have too many troubles. Now, if the lid's got moisture on it, make sure that's dried off because you don't want that building up and dripping on top of the cheeses. So just with a piece of paper towel, just give that a wipe and then pop that back on top again. So total ripening time from when you first put them in the cheese fridge is six to 10 weeks depending on how oozy you, you like your blue cheese. If you like it quite firm, then go for the six weeks. Anyway, back to Gav. So that was fairly uh, easy. I saw it's an, more of an intermediate cheese, and I found that the blue mould started to grow at about the 10-day mark. So that's when I pierced it. I didn't pierce it beforehand. It did mention in the recipe, the original recipe that I used, that after one week you should pierce it. I waited until I saw a coating of blue on the outside so I knew that the Penicillium Rogue 40 was actually growing. So 
Uh, it's pierced now, it's in the cheese cave. I've turned it a couple of times. Uh, it's got some blue on the outside. It hasn't got, um, it's not entirely covered in blue, but it's gonna age for between six and 10 weeks. Um, and then once it has a fairly a blue mold all over, I'm gonna wrap it in some silver uh, cheese wrap that is micro perforated, so it lets it breathe. Uh, and then I'll store it in the kitchen fridge uh, hopefully it doesn't smell the fridge out a little bit too much. There's some spunky, spunky, some funky smells coming out of the uh, cheese cave already. Uh, anyway, we'll have a taste test on this one in about four to five weeks time. Uh, it should be mature then, but I'll, I'll kind of gauge it. It needs to be runny on the inside or, or the blue mold needs to have made it a bit oozy, but we'll see how that goes if I'm gonna stay true to type. If not, I'll cut it. It should be fairly creamy with the addition of that cream. So that should be good. Uh, and then uh, we'll do the taste test and uh, I'll give my verdict on what this cheese tastes like. So don't forget, you can pick up the kit. I recommend the specialty cheese kit uh, and I'll put the link for that in the description below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, of course. Uh, and you can subscribe to the channel to get more cheesy content. If you want to become a financial member, please do so over at Patreon or YouTube memberships and the links are in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we will see you next time.